Aloha, everyone, and welcome to today's series of Better Government. I'm Aaron Ling Johansson, House Minority Leader, and I'm excited today to be joined by my colleague, my Minority Floor Leader, Representative Beth Fukumoto. Welcome, Beth. Thanks. Today we're going to be talking about our Minority Caucus package, and we think that it's just a bunch of common sense ideas uh, that really have some broader resonance out there in the public in terms of making some quality of life improvements for everybody. Why don't you give us some perspective uh, just into the, the theme of the package and sort of the heart of it, Beth? Well, we wanted to do something that was going to, like you said, appeal to everybody, so not big businesses, not big banks, not big government, just everyday people, working people. Um, so we tried to look at things that were going to help protect children, help protect our seniors, um, make things better for our working people, our working families, try to keep the cost of living down, that sort of thing. So we titled it Common Goals, Common Ground. So just the idea that there's a lot of things that, you know, right now in government and in politics, people are really disagreeing a lot. But there's a lot of stuff we can agree on. Um, we just need people and we need leaders that are going to try to look for common ground. And I think that's what we're trying to do. Um, mm -hmm. I know that's a goal of yours. And I think that's a goal of our caucuses. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the theme. You know, and don't you find when you're out in the supermarket or you know, you're at a town hall or you're just out in your community that when people approach you, they fundamentally expect that government is going to do something positive in their life. And they, expect, they just expect us to get some work done on their behalf. I mean, that's, that's the common uh, chatter that I hear from, right. from all my neighbors, all of my constituents. They just want something good done, uh, and they just want their lives improved to some extent. Right. I think that is what it is. I mean, people are excited about, uh, not excited, but people like government because they, you know, they do have this trust in government. And as, as Americans, we learn that, you know, our style of government is a great one. Um, and they expect a lot from it. They don't always have a lot of faith in their politicians. And I think that's what we're trying to combat mm -hmm. and just let people know that we actually do have their best interests at mm -hmm. heart. Sometimes we'll disagree on how to go about fixing things, mm -hmm. but, um, but we do. We do really want to find things that are going to be good for everybody, not just small groups of right. people. It's that common desire to actually fix things. Right. Right. Um, and I think that expresses very well uh, to everybody just what's really at the heart of our package. Um, and so it's, it's going to be great to just delve into it a little more. Why don't you tell me, I think, I personally think there's a, a lot of good ideas um, here that will make a, a quality of life improvement for all. But why don't you tell me what some of your favorite ones are? Give, give the audience a little bit of flavor of just um, some of your, your personal okay. favorites in this package. Okay, well, I have one of, one of my biggest issues this year is just child safety. Mm -hmm. um, I have a niece that's four years old. Actually, she just turned five two days ago. Um, she's five. She's going to be going to uh, Milani Wina Elementary School and starting kindergarten. Um, she's really excited. Um, but I think one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we're doing is doing the best that we can to protect our kids while they're in school. Mm -hmm. I think our teachers and our principals are working really, really hard mm -hmm. um, to make sure that that happens. Um, but we want to make sure we're giving them all the tools we they need. Um, so one of the things I wanted to look at was um, how to lock school doors. Unfortunately, the, the, the caucus was interested in that topic, too. So we sort of wanted to open the discussion on what's the best kind of doors to put on our classrooms. And it seems like a very simple thing to look mm -hmm. at. Um, when other people are talking about all sorts of other things, guns and that kind of stuff. But let's, I mean, I think one of the things is can we, are our schools going to be safe? And mm, the yeah. Department of Education has certainly tried. I know they have. Um, but, you know, just making sure that the fire code and the way our doors lock and all of that fits now because now we have, you know, new problems that perhaps were not there when we first developed our fire code. Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that, you know, teachers can maybe lock the door from the inside provided kids can get out in an emergency, mm -hmm. um, but making sure that the teachers also, if they lock it from the inside, can't get locked out by the right. kids, you know? So, right. I mean, there are a lot of problems to look at, and it seems like nobody seems very clear on exactly what the best way to do that is, so we wanted to open up that discussion. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's unfortunate that it would take a, a tragedy like existed right. in Connecticut and Sandy Hook, but I, I think, um, you know, it's it's prudent and wise to, to look at things in context. Right. and. One of the reasons that I think um, you know a, a bill that's near and dear to your heart that you just talked about is important is because so often uh, we look for grand ways to solve problems, um, right. uh, often expensive, but sometimes the the solutions are really uh, just some common sense, small mm -hmm. fix it type measures right. uh, that really actually make a big difference in in child safety and making sure right. that you know our children are protected and certainly. That's on the mind of every parent when they drop off their, or grandparent when they drop off their, their student and their mm -hmm. child. 
at school. You know, they're they're leaving them in the care right. of the Department of Education and um, in the right. capable hands of principals and teachers. But yeah. we also have to give um, these administrators the right tools to keep everybody safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that was one of the populations that I think we really wanted to work on just addressing. Um, because like you said, that's something common. We're all concerned about that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing was seniors. I know you have a lot of seniors in your district. I do. Um, and I have a lot in mine. <laughs> and we, I think we wanted to make sure that we were taking care of them too. Mm -hmm. um, so we looked at different measures, um, financial protections and stuff for the elderly. Um, but, but along those lines, just making sure we have enough physicians. Mm -hmm. So that's making sure you know our seniors can find care, our children can find care. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to do was actually to put some money into residency programs um, mm -hmm. in Hawaii. To keep more doctors here? Right, to keep doctors here. So I mean, we, ha we have a great medical school and a lot of times our, our med students are having to go away to mm -hmm. the mainland mm -hmm. um, to find residencies. Cer and certainly was a bunch of my yeah. uh, friends who graduated from Chapsom. Yeah. And they don't come back. A lot of them don't. I mean, some of them do, but a lot of them don't. And to keep people here, you're right. I mean, that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we're doing too. I, I think that's great. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's a theme of seeking to reduce that brain drain. Right. I mean, um, you know, the, the state funded dollars are going to uh, mm -hmm. help run Jabsum and people are getting trained well. Yeah. And it's a lot of these people really do want to stay here at home. And I, I think that's important yeah. for making our healthcare system more dynamic mm -hmm. and for growing our economy yeah. to have that knowledge yeah. base here and to have that yeah. uh, high skilled labor um, yeah. is an important infusion so it's yeah. I think it's it's helpful to, right. to try to stem that tide and we, we need more doctors there's yeah. a lot of there are very few in certain fields uh, doctors anymore you know whether it's OBGYNs mm -hmm. or practicing obstetricians uh, yeah. or others so yeah. Uh, I think a lot of merit and promise in that one as well. Yeah, and I think our seniors especially, I mean, uh, a lot of the problem for uh, a lot of them is that their kids have gone away mm -hmm. and there's nobody here to take care of them. And that to me is really sad is that, they, you know, their kids couldn't find jobs so they couldn't stay and now their parents are aging and they, you know, mm -hmm. there's nobody there. Um, so in the long run, I mean, a lot of times those end up being costs to the state if we want to talk finances, um, things like not being able to find adequate care, mm -hmm. um, not having families able to stay together so that children can help take care of their parents. Um, and uh, all that stuff is stuff we need to address, and sometimes it costs a little bit of money up front. Mm -hmm. um, but in the long run, it's going to save us a lot of money, too. Yeah, so it really does lend credence to, right. you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a mm -hmm. pound of cure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in the long run, that's very fiscally yeah. responsible for the state to explore ways um, you know, that, that we can be the ounce of prevention rather right. than the pound of cure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the, the bills that I'm very excited about in this caucus package because it's particularly acute in my district. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I represent a lot of communities that feed into Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam or mm -hmm. Fort Shafter or a lot of the military installations. Um, but the Veterans Treatment Court, I think, mm -hmm. has broad support uh, within the Capitol. I mean, it's, yeah. it's certainly not just exclusively our idea. Um, a, a lot of people support and, and people have introduced right. various versions of it. But you know, I think it's time has really come and I'm excited that it seems closer and closer to the finish line because mm -hmm. for so many veterans, once um, they come back from being mobilized, uh, there are just some sig significant issues that many of us who haven't had to prosecute an actual war um, and be in those kinds of stressful situations face. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, as, as hostile as some work environments can be, mm -hmm. uh, it's not, not the same. It right. doesn't engender post-traumatic stress disorder. And the way that manifests itself in many of our communities, um, I think requires some additional mechanism to adjudicate some of those issues mm -hmm. because they are complex ones. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think for the Veterans Treatment Court, I mean, that's a great way vis-a-vis -vis how we've done it in Hawaii with drug court or family court, taking mm -hmm. a targeted approach um, uh, to, to not just address the problem, but, but to hopefully explore that preventative aspect as mm -hmm. well. That's one of the things that I think the, the judiciary is doing really well is they're looking at specialty mm -hmm. courts. Um, I think and they're, they're in support of this veterans court too, mm -hmm. and they're also bringing in money for a girls court, which I think is a great, great thing too. They've been doing it and they're getting a lot of success because I think one of the things that we need to realize is that every group of people is going to have its own unique problems and if there's any way that we can make sure to help and rehabilitate them as well um, then just you know throwing them in jail I think that's a good thing for us and mm -hmm. it's something that we need to be focused on doing because mm -hmm. it's our responsibility reduces the long-term cost right. of you know right. the, the uh, judicial system and, and the mm -hmm. public safety system mm -hmm. yeah. yeah what other bills are you excited about 
Well, I think uh, there's some common sense ones to help out small business. What's often lost in the mm -hmm. conversation when we discuss small businesses is uh, just what a job creator they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and a job creator means that they are employing a lot of our friends and our neighbors mm -hmm. and our family members, thus mm -hmm. you know, how important they are, I think, to our economy. And they're particularly important to Hawaii's economy. And, and I think we as a legislature really need to do more yeah. uh, to help support them. And so uh, some of the bills that we've introduced uh, aim to do just that. Mm -hmm. And I think they're common sense extensions of things we've passed, whether it's exempting uh, you know, family members for workers' compensation or, you know, mm -hmm. the things that help reduce the cost um, because your family is essentially running the small business. I, I think that really will help some family-owned businesses. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we often look at ways of how to uplift people in this legislature. Right. And I think one of the groups that we forget is that many of these small businesses are really just people. Right. Um, they may be an entity as a small business, but they are also people right. that need to be uplifted. And I think the legislature needs to do more to help uh, these job creators that are employing our friends and our neighbors. Right. Um, and, and that includes looking at ways to unburden them from right. some of a, you know, the burdens that they face right. that make it difficult for them um, certainly to survive, but it, but it almost makes it impossible to thrive. And, and really, we have a lot of potential here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And if we unleash, if we unshackle uh, you know, some of these, these small businesses mm -hmm. from a lot of the burdens that they face. I, I really think there's a, mm -hmm. a lot of potential to be exploited, uh, which is good for our economy and thus ultimately good for the state and good for all of our people because it's, it's those kinds of things that uplift um, working conditions for everyone, mm -hmm. reduce the cost of living for everyone, and, mm -hmm. and in so doing, improve the quality of life for everyone. Right. Right. I was talking to one small business owner um, just yesterday, and she was, she was saying, I mean, she, she's in a third generation um, family owned business, so it's just her mm -hmm. now running it. It's her grandfather's business. And she said, you know, a lot of times the legislature doesn't understand that it's just me. Yeah, they, they think of businesses as corporations, and so there's, you know, an, mm -hmm. an HR person and, and a finance person. She said, I have to do everything. So every little bit of paperwork that gets added on, every single thing I have to track, at all of that, everything that's mandated mm -hmm. is something I have to do by myself, and that's time taken away that I can be creating jobs for people. And she, you know, she said, "I'm the first person that's going to want to raise my employees' salaries to twenty dollars an hour mm -hmm. the minute I can afford it." But the economy is not allowing me to afford it, um, and I think that's we need to give that, her the opportunity. You know, she wants to take care of her workers and give her the opportunity yeah. to do that and create jobs. And yeah. I think a lot of small businesses do. Mm -hmm. um, so the ability to help them to do it. Yeah. Uh, in a way that is both feasible for them as a business and also great for the worker as a win-win right. for everybody. Right. Right. I think uh, also what excites me is just uh, greater attention paid uh, to seniors. You know, with the ever-changing mm -hmm. technology um, and just the gradual sophistication, uh, mm -hmm. particularly of technology um, and of other types of, unfortunately, criminals, mm -hmm. um, sometimes the way we promulgate laws for our seniors just doesn't keep pace. Right. unfortunately with those crimes and I, I think it's important to protect seniors from greater financial exploitation I mean there's so many ways now unfortunately that unscrupulous people and criminals can you know uh, adversely impact our seniors mm -hmm. and and oftentimes they're one of the populations least equipped uh, to combat these criminals right. and so to have a bill in our package uh, that makes it a, a greater offense uh, to financially exploit those mm -hmm. you know uh, who are it's in their mid 60s and above uh, is important I mean it, it may not deter everyone but it certainly serves as a deterrent for some people who will think twice about taking advantage of our seniors right yeah one of the I, I think for both of our communities people are people are really concerned about their their parents I mean you have multi generations in your homes in your mm -hmm. in your communities too and people are worried about it. and that's what we're trying to focus on here is you know how can we help you take care of you know your parents your kids and, and but do it in a way that enables the family um, and the family is a unit and I think that's you know one of the, the common goals that we've been able to find with a lot of people here even in this body and with our constituents so I'm excited. I'm particularly excited about this package because I think it really is focusing on those everyday people and mm -hmm. what's on top of mind for them. So. Yeah, and I think with respect to those everyday people, it's focused on helping provide and create opportunity for them, right. whether it's opportunity just in their personal lives or opportunity 
uh, you know, in their working professions or yeah. uh, just, just that creation of opportunity for people mm -hmm. is so important. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, that's what gets people down is, mm -hmm. is a perceived lack of opportunity, right. whether it's, you know, educational or economic or right. just, you know, even, even quality time with their families. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that that's important, opportunity for all. And, you know, and I think everybody in this building, um, mm -hmm. no matter what your political philosophies, is here because everybody wants um, to see that opportunity. Now, we have differing ways of how we engender that opportunity, but I think that's a theme that you see in this package. You know, yeah. creating opportunity for all so that people have what they need mm -hmm. to help, the, you know, to, to succeed. Right. And um, in an optimal world, I think, uh, you know, government either can be that catalyst, but government doesn't need to necessarily right. be the one right. to create the opportunity. Right. Um, right. And But sometimes it can get in the way of it. And I think that's right. part of what you see in our package, that we just want to make sure that government is um, appropriately on the sidelines if mm -hmm. it needs to be, mm -hmm. or being that catalyst for greater opportunity um, for someone to seize those opportunities and, and chart their right. own course and make their own destiny um, right. if they so choose. Yeah, that's sort of been, I think, that that's sort of the, the third part. We were looking at our communities and creating opportunity for people and then also making sure that government is being completely transparent and mm -hmm. serving people the best that they can. One of the bills that I really like, um, we're talking about asking the departments to post all their information online. So whether it's just looking at the state's financials so that yeah. the average person can say, well, how much is left in the hurricane relief fund? Because mm -hmm. um, that's what people are asking about. They want to mm -hmm. know. They put their money in. They want to know what's there. Um, or whether or not it's tracking CIP projects. So, you know, when is, for, for my district, is when Kamehameha Highway going to get paved? Right. At what point right. are we at right now? And I've <laughs> driven over some of those potholes. So oh, boy, they're bad. You know, <laughs> boy, do I understand yeah. what it's people in your community want. Since the rain, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's just, I mean, um, our senator said, you know, it's getting it's getting scary because you're starting to see people dodge the potholes yeah. on a one lane road and and um, it, it gets a little nerve wracking. So, you know, but people want to just know, OK, we're willing to pay our taxes, but where is the money going? Mm -hmm. How quick is it getting done? Why is it taking so long? And people I found people are very understanding if you explain. Mm -hmm. But we what we do so badly is just explain yeah. and be transparent. People do want effective government and they want mm -hmm. to know that it's accessible, right. that they can figure out what's going on. And I think you're right. There definitely is that frustration right. out there that, you know, yes, I, I do elect each of you to represent me, right. but, you know, b you shouldn't be my only access point to information. Right. And I think, you know, that kind of website um, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, that might come up with DAGs through this legislation and or other initiatives mm -hmm. uh, is an attempt to give people that access to their own government because it is their own mm -hmm. um, and, and I think everybody does want uh, effective government but mm -hmm. but at some level we all want to know um, what what our own personal investment is yielding us and you know people do that with their own home investments with the purchases they make for their family mm -hmm. Is it is it good or not? Mm -hmm. um, and if not, why? What's not working? Mm -hmm. Those are the common sense questions that come up at the dinner table right. uh, that I think our package is trying to bring right. to the legislative dialogue. Right. Yeah. And I, I you know, I think I, I just I'm excited as well about you know uh, some of the election uh, reform mm. measures that we introduced along this this line of transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just trying to just trying to ensure that there's greater dissemination of information mm -hmm. about some of these major changes that we make either in the city charter right. or the state constitution. I mean, this, these are the governing documents of both the city and county as well as, uh, or, or your, your county rather, as well as the state. And most people are, are not sure. Right. Even people who take the time to read what's published in the right. newspaper or look on the Office of Elections website. There's not necessarily a ton of information that mm -hmm. explains to the average person, mm -hmm. if I vote yes, what's going to happen? If I vote no, what's going to happen? Right. And what happens if I leave it blank? That's you know that's always right. a controversy right. of is a blank vote a no vote yep. with a constitutional yep. amendment? Yep. And you know so, uh, I think, I think trying to find that transparency, mm -hmm. trying to help create that kind of opportunity mm -hmm. or make sure that opportunity happens on its own because we're not getting in the way. Mm -hmm. Or uh, you know, just improving the quality of life for everyone, um, you know, whether it's seniors or children uh, or those uh, you know um, who who are facing a tough time right. in society. 
those are some of the major themes uh, that I think we're trying to get across mm -hmm. here. And I, I think that that's, I think it's an ambitious agenda, but it, it's one that definitely needs to be a part of the conversation here at right. the legislature. Yeah. How can people get involved if they want to get involved? Good question. And I think people should feel free to contact our mm -hmm. offices. Um, we have a, a House Minority web page. People definitely should think about testifying or mm -hmm. submitting testimony. Uh, at least make your voice heard. You know, it, contact your legislator. Make sure that they know how you feel. And that's honestly, mm -hmm. don't you find the most effective when someone calls you definitely. and says, Representative Fukumoto, this is my concern. Yeah. I, you know, I have an issue with this because you know that someone's taken mm -hmm. the time to actually research it, taken mm -hmm. their precious time out of their personal mm -hmm. lives to call you. Uh, but whether it's emailing, phoning, stopping by in person, mm -hmm. uh, submitting testimony, uh, or even just you know, um, sending mail, mm -hmm. uh, I find it's, it's all a very good way to get involved mm -hmm. in sometimes what can be a, a difficult process for yeah. the average person. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it is kind of, um, it, it's always nice because you don't, people spend a lot of money on polls just trying to figure out how people feel and it's always nice when a constituent calls. It just explains their point of view because it's always possible that we just didn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, when I was talking to a couple of um, small business owners the other day, um, I, that's what I said. I said, you know, I don't, I don't own a business. I know people that do. But, you know, I, I'm not going to know what your problems are if you don't tell me, but I definitely want to help. So I think that's what people just need to keep in mind. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, a good note uh, to, to end on with mm -hmm. this segment of better government that, you know, government is only as good as the feedback we're getting and your direct involvement. And we encourage you uh, a lot uh, just to get involved and, and make your voice known and, and make your voice heard because I think that no matter what your perspective is going to make your government more responsive to you. And in the end, that's, that's what your government should be. It should be responsive to your needs and your will. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, I want to thank sure. my minority floor leader, Representative sure. Beth Fukumoto from Mililani, Mililani Malka, uh, for being here today. Uh, and giving us me. Giving us a great preview of, of some of the really exciting bills in our package. Uh, and with that, uh, we thank you for joining us. And again, be involved, be vocal, um, and, and please uh, stay in touch with your legislature. Aloha.